One of the most common complaints I hear from oil painters looking to paint like a full-time professional does is that they keep creating muddy color or they fail to match the beautiful color and light that they know they want to convey in their paintings. There are all kinds of ways that you can strengthen your color skills, but the reality is that most painters spend their time focusing on the exact wrong thing. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through what oil painters get wrong about color, the best exercises to use to strengthen your color skills instead, and the surprising exercise that you probably aren't doing, but that helps you to grow the most out of all the things that you could be doing to improve your color game. So what do most people get wrong when it comes to color? It's thinking that extensive knowledge of color theory is your missing ingredient. The truth is, you really only need to understand three facets of color hue, value, and chroma. To put it plainly, hue is what we think of when we name a color, so red, orange, yellow, etc. Value is how light or dark that color is within that hue. So is it a light pastel pink or a dark burgundy red? And chroma, also sometimes referred to as saturation, is how pure that color is. So when we think of red, a hot magenta is typically the highest chroma version of that red hue whereas a dull, warm gray would probably be the lowest chroma version of that hue. That's it. That's really all you have to know. If you know where the various hues are on a color wheel and you understand value, that's really all of the color theory necessary to paint the way that you want to paint. No worrying about warms and cools or warm light versus cool shadow. I find these are oversimplified ways of thinking that often confuse us much more than they clarify what we need to paint. So if the answer isn't diving into a master level course on color theory, what do we do with the easel to capture the color that we want to put into our paintings? What I have found works best after working with hundreds of artists to strengthen their skills in painting, striking color and light, is to isolate color as a variable and study it in isolation. Because when we are working on an original painting that we want to bring to a polish, we are juggling so many variables. What subject am I going to paint? How will I compose the image? How's the likeness looking? How do I keep my brushwork loose? Not to mention managing your value structure or getting really striking color. Instead, I want you to be able to focus on color as purely as possible, which means taking everything else out of the equation. And that's what I'm showing you here in this video. I found a Bouguereau painting that had beautiful, subtle skin tones, and I wanted to understand how he was able to get those really beautiful nuances. To do this, I broke the image into a grid and then transferred that exact grid setup to a blank panel for me to paint on. Then looking at the reference square by square, I identified what I thought was the dominant or most important color within that area. I mixed the color up, I then transferred it to the corresponding square on my canvas. All this requires is a little bit of setup to make sure that you have an equivalent grid between the reference and your canvas. You also need a flat brush that's about the width of each square, typically a little bit smaller is easier, and you need your paint. One extra hack that you can use here is that rather than working off of a screen to show your reference, you can get a high quality color printout of your reference complete with the grid, and once you mix up your paint, you can actually hold it up to the reference and see if your paint mixture visually blends in with the square that you're matching it to on the reference. If you find that your hue, your value, and your chroma are off, all you have to do is adjust the mixture before you actually put it down onto your canvas. Now, the reason I recommend doing this as a print off versus working off of your reference on a screen is that being able to color match the mixture that you've put together on your palette to your reference means that you really want to be able to see those two colors, again, your color mixture versus that spot on the reference in the same light. And when you work off of a screen, well, the screen itself is a light source and it will put your brush or your palette knife that has your color mixture on it in shadow. And you won't ever feel like you're quite getting the same mixture even though you probably are. So working off of a print off is a helpful hack to make this even easier to really make sure that what you're mixing up exactly matches what you're looking to match in your reference. And so as you start to build up your grid color study of this painting, it should actually start to look like the painting itself, despite not having an intricate drawing or any small details. 
This is also usually the stage where you realize that maybe some of your initial squares aren't looking as accurate as you initially thought, which is totally okay. This is part of the learning process. All you need to do is simply remix the color for that square and paint it right over top of that area. What I see happening when my students do this exercise is that their eyes start to open to a lot of color nuance that they just weren't seeing at all before in their work. Areas where the hue shifts as an object falls from being in the light to being in shadow. Places where they thought of the color as being bright, so they opted to paint it with a really light value, but actually the perceived intensity was coming from the color being high chroma instead. So think instead of yellow ochre plus white as pure cadmium. Can you imagine that color difference or that difference in intensity? This is actually one of the most common problems I see in color is that we often mistake a really intense value contrast for chroma. The reason that this breakthrough happens in this kind of exercise is that your brain isn't having to jump between managing an accurate drawing, tweaking the composition, or trying to create bold brushwork. Instead, your entire focus can just settle on the areas of the painting that you had blind spots when it came to color around. If you're looking for other color exercises to help you on this journey as well, I would really recommend doing the color charts that Richard Schmid talks about in his book, A La Prima 2, to help solidify your understanding of your own palette. I have a full video on the process of making color charts that I will link above for you to check out. And if you would like a simpler version of this color matching exercise that isn't based on something like a master copy, but is instead dedicated to just individual swatches of color, what you can do is you can go ahead and head to your local paint or hardware store, take home some free paint chips, and then mix up paint that's designed to match it and test it by painting it directly onto the paint chip until you get the color identical. This might not get you a teeny tiny gridded or pixelated version of your favorite masterpiece, but it will get you really, really comfortable with your own palette and your own ability to match the color that you see so that when you do zoom out and go to a slightly more ambitious project like a master study or like one of your original paintings, you have much more confidence in your ability to capture the color that you're out to put onto your painting. But if your goal is to understand how master artists used color in their work, this grid exercise is absolutely ideal and one that I do not see enough painters using. Once you have this down, you can graduate into things like full color studies and play with applying these color schemes to your own original paintings. But I'm curious what questions you have when it comes to color. Let me know what questions you have in the comments. And if you enjoy doing this exercise or you found this video helpful and you want in-depth step-by-step guidance like this to get you all the way to your big painting goals, I have an entire mentorship program designed exactly for this purpose. To find out what other artists like you have achieved in the program and to apply to see if we are a fit to work together, check out the links in the description box below. And until then, happy painting.